Hello everyone. Resident Evil. This is a melee only, no damage playthrough of Resident Evil Remake. We're playing as Jill on hard difficulty. First things first, equipping that knife. <laughs> then head back to the main hall. So the rules of melee only it's uh, kind of uh, bending the rules a little bit here for the standard knife-only run. I could also do knife-only, but I thought that this would be a fun way to try doing a no-damage playthrough. So I'm using knife-only plus defense items. Because technically those count as melee weapons too, right? Right? Well, there you go. We still have to uh, do the two speedrun dodges right here from the get-go in order to get around those first two zombies. Also, I'm using door skip over here because... Obviously doing this run over and over again, I'm just like, devoid of all fucks. Anyhow, slashing the zombies in the head actually does a little bit more damage. I was actually really close to doing a no-save version of this run, but I uh, took a hit on the final tyrant. So I just decided to say fuck it and do it segmented. Maybe I'll return and do a no save run one of these days. The reason why I decided to roll with Jill in this particular playthrough first, I did actually complete the Chris version of this playthrough at the time of this recording was because Jill could skip Plant 42 by simply using the V-Jolt, which is a luxury that Chris does not have. Anyway, first up, I uh, killed that zombie. Um, if you knife zombies, then the first time they fall, they will always be dead. So that's uh, worth noting. If you're trying to go for the knife-only achievement, Pretty handy, but of course alternate controls make this pretty easy for the most part. After I knifed that zombie, I decided to exit and re-enter the area just to ensure that the zombie on the left here would be in a completely unaggroed state. And then I would run to the right side of that lane going towards the arrow tombstone to put the arrow in. And if I do that, then that zombie will not activate as you can see coming out. I'm gonna grab our uh, first safety net over here. Daga Naifu, as it's called in Japanese. But, uh, yeah, yeah, playing Japanese, whatever. I just decided to do it because, you know, I wasn't, like, doing cutscenes or nothing. This isn't a speedrun. I did this with saves. But I just decided to play the Japanese version anyway, just because at the time the text skipping was faster. After we squashed the head of that other zombie, we got another knife to use. Then we're going to go into the Jill sandwich room and grab yet another dagger. What are some things to consider when only using the knife as a primary weapon? Well, Jill has 
a pretty decent move set with the knife, I guess. But uh, Jill also has less health and does less melee damage than Chris does. So bosses like Yawn, for instance, take a lot longer. And also Jill's knife range is not that great. For the most part, we have to do some speedrun dodges in order to get around these guys. Um, whenever I go into that camera angle, I just uh, try to... I just try to peek into the camera angle moving as little into the camera angle as possible to see where that zombie is because if he's close to the double doors and I just blind rush it, then he's just going to grab me and I'll lose a dagger. Because we're playing on hard mode, the zombie that would normally be on the uh, side closest to the murder hall is between the dog terrace and the stairs. So we have to uh, kind of trickily move around him. Decided to grab a ink ribbon here too. Because this right here is the first choke point, and I just wanted to record this playthrough just to demonstrate how it's all done. Not even to like achieve anything. If I actually wanted to achieve something, then I just do it no save, but anyhow. Loading up the, uh, loading up part two now. Bacarsi, why do you load immediately after saving? Please tell me, does the save menu actually work that way? No, it, 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 it does not. It absolutely does not. I recorded a separate part. So zombies, while they're on the stairs, they puke. So if you... Uh, if you can lure a zombie to one side and then merc the other side, then you can just bully at it, bully him out of the way and he'll miss. What we're doing for the dog here is uh, he's going to throw his head up. And uh, when he does that... Oh, man. Pongo, give me the runaround. This is actually backup strats right here. What he was supposed to do was whenever he throws his head up, I was supposed to knife him. And uh, usually that uh, forces him about 66% of the time to follow up with a uh, tackle. But now I gotta do some pretty deft footwork. So he tackled me and I used a defense item. If he tackles me, it doesn't cause any damage. And I get to counterattack. And with all the times that I stabbed him, it was a free kill if he uh, tackled me. Normally, I use the stun gun. Like, I slash him when he throws his head up. I use the stun gun, and then I follow up with a couple of more quick knives. And that's usually enough to kill him. Usually pretty consistent. But if it doesn't work, you know, he throws his head up. And he doesn't go for the tackle, then you gotta cheese him from around that corner like I was doing. The commentary is going a little bit slower than the game is, so I'm trying to do my best to catch up. Anyhow. Unlike in a speedrun, we are not going to go through the murder hall here. Because that's a dumb idea. It's like asking, do you want to take damage? Yes or no? And the answer is no. Because this is not a speedrun. <laughs> We're just going to take the longer, safer way around. Oh, uh, by the way, if you're playing on hard mode and you have forest unlocked and, you know, there's one dangerous zombie and all that, uh, you might want to actually watch my Chris video because I didn't even consider one dangerous zombie at the time that I recorded this, but I had one dangerous zombie accidentally unlocked on a save file and I just decided to record the one dangerous zombie version of the run with my Chris melee only no damage run, so check that out 
if you want some strategies for how to get around forest. But forest also... Forest is also pretty bad at attacking, so I wouldn't worry about forest all that much. We just came out here for another dagger. We're not getting the grenade launcher, but there is another dagger, and those daggers equal safety nets. All the safety nets. Now we're going to do Moonlight Sonata here. Actually, no, we're not. I lied. We don't do Moonlight Sonata until after Richard. I forgot what part of the video we were on. Ha ha. We're going to stair skate up here and uh, go this way in order to safely make our... Yeah, there was a Crimson Head there, but it's still safe as long as you're holding the action button in order to safely go through the door. Also, it would have been better to wait for that zombie to get on the stairs. So after we're done with that, there's this zombie over here. Just did that in order to do a spot check on his position. Go through the door. So one other thing that Jill can actually do with the knife is uh, wave dash backwards a little bit. If you tap R1 a bunch of times, like if you tap the aim button a bunch of times, then Jill will sort of do like a little jiggle with the knife and just sort of shift backwards repeatedly, which is uh, kind of handy for dodging certain zombies actually. It's more of an RE0 strat where the movement is even clunkier, but whatever. I don't actually need to come in here, but... Wait, actually, yeah, I do, because the Crimson Head. I need a uh, need a stun gun for the Crimson Head. So we're going to do a speedrun dodge here, just to sort of back off, lure him there. And uh, I proc the quick turn out of that second zombie in order to force him to move in one direction so that I'd be able to get out of the room. And the third zombie, I mean, you're always going to proc a quick turn on him, just headed back through the F-shape hallway. Before we go into the, uh, the tea room up here, Oh, I actually went for that dodge? Normally I just sit on the stairs and uh, slash his head a whole bunch. Well, that's okay. He's actually not terrible to dodge here. And of course... Baldy over here didn't play nice, so... I had to stab him in the head, and then we're going to follow that up with... just going the opposite direction of wherever that zombie was coming from I and mean, just cheese around a cheese around a cheese around in a circle go for the door by the way this run was actually recorded like over a year ago so I've had this sitting on my hard drive for a long time I guess I was just kind of hesitant to upload it because I wondered if I would ever get the no save no damage You can see wave dashing in action there. I just tapped R1 in order to um <clears throat> I just tapped R1 in order to uh move backwards a little bit. Maintain distance safely while still being able to shift and move forward if I needed to. Nothing wrong with having both on the channel, Carsey. Yeah. Not a bad idea in the future. Could see it being uh could see it being a good thing. 
That zombie is always going to quick turn as long as we run down the left-hand side of that hallway. Where am I going? <laughs> wow, I must have been like half asleep when I recorded this. I don't even remember what I was like when I recorded this. I just remember that I recorded it and I remembered the strats that I used. Do zombies killed with the knife become crimson heads? Um, most of the zombies do. There are certain exceptions to zombies becoming crimson heads, and those are the zombies in the graveyard, for instance. The graveyard at the start of the game, those don't become crimson heads. Their bodies just disappear. And also the naked zombies in the lab do not become crimson heads. But in general, dealing with Crimson Heads just means that we have to take a very specific route and uh, try not to go back through the same area more than like two, three times. The only time that we ever have to maybe worry about a Crimson Head is in the mansion. Which is why I don't bother killing zombies so much. You could use Richard to kill Yawn, but you don't really want to do that. There's no reason to. Yawn is dreadfully easy to get around. You just have to take wide angles and force Yawn to go around the uh, banisters. But in general, it's like, I don't stop to burn bodies just simply because of the amount of time that it takes. Maybe if I was doing a kill all run, I'd burn bodies. Also, there's no reason to go into that save room over there because there are no defense items. Just health items and weapons. Or sorry, health items and uh, ammo. Do the puzzle over here. Sword guy orange, the guy with the necklace, turn him purple, the guy with the crown, turn him green. Now we have all of the, uh, now we have all of the, uh, requisite items here. Now that we've unlocked this door, I'm going to go into the dining room and make a save. Here is part three. We're going to go from Crimson Head up to the Sharks in part three. So for dealing with Elder Crimson Head, I guess I'll uh, get started on talking about what we need to do. Uh, basically, after putting in all of the stone masks, the coffin drops, Crimson Head comes out whenever we approach it, and uh, what we do is we actually want to run towards uh, the Crimson Head's, towards the Crimson Head's rear and to his right butt cheek, basically. So Elder Crimson Head's right butt cheek is where we want to run to. He's going to whiff his first attack. We want him to whiff his first attack. This is easiest to do with alternate controls, of course, by the way. And uh, whenever we go behind his right butt cheek, basically that always prompts Elder Crimson Head to uh, do a 180 and grab us. Instead of doing a 180 slash, if we move towards his left butt cheek, 
then he tends to do slashes more. But the right butt cheek generally beats out a beats out a turning grab. This is also very handy for Chris any percent speedruns, by the way. Because you're supposed to kill Elder Crimson Head with a grenade. So I equipped the stun gun, running to his right butt cheek, and he is spinning around. He's getting grabbed. And while he is mid-stun, we are going to slash his throat. And he's dead. That's how it's done. So now we got the... Uh, now we got the emblem, the stone and metal object. Then we're out of here. Also, Elder Crimson Head is literally the whole reason why I decided to use melee items. Because the boss is straight up unfair with a knife. You either have to cheese him or you have to use a lot of health items. Neither of which I felt like doing. Turn the red cock to face west. And then we'll turn the blue cock to face north. Is stun gun and throat slash an actual thing like Chris's flashbangs blowing off heads, or did I just need one knife's worth of damage? I just needed one head slash worth of damage. Because slashing in the head slashing them in the head actually does more damage. As far as I can tell anyway. So for Lisa, because I'm playing with an unlocked frame rate, we're playing at 120 FPS, there is a very specific dodge. If you turn off your V-Sync and you have variable frame rate activated, then the game plays pretty much at optimal speed. But I always play at 120 FPS because those that's what I'm used to for dodging regardless. So it doesn't matter, not a speed run. But what I did was I buffered my up input and I walked forward one step so that I could bait out Lisa's front swing from her left side. And when that happens, that's when I break into a run and just run around Lisa's right. Jill's left, Lisa's right. And I do that with tank controls. Outside of IK sub weapons, uh, the only IK sub weapon, by the way, is Chris's uh, grenades. Do the sub weapons have different damage levels or effects? Um, I don't really think they have different damage levels. I think that enemies have variable HP. Actually, yeah, that is exactly the case. The enemies just have variable HP. But uh, specifically regular enemies. Bosses, I believe, have a static set of HP. So your results, your mileage may vary. Also, yeah, I realize there is tearing on the screen. Hey, Carsey, turn on V-Sync. Fuck no. 
Do you want me to play worse? No, because V-Sync, while it does make the picture look nicer, it's going to cause a lot of input lag. So why do I want to do that? Why do I want to do that to myself? And the answer is not at all. That is why my V-Sync is always set to off. What's the minimum and maximum health on a zombie? I actually do not know that information. As long as we uh, don't fuck around in the in the bar over there, we can just grab the red book, get in, get out. Not worry about the spider. He's just going to stay on the wall. But if he gets off the wall, then, you know, we just run around behind him. He generally won't spit acid fast enough. Grab the 001 key from here. We're going to have a dagger equipped. Preferably not stun gun. Rather save stun guns for uh, killing zombies if we absolutely need to. I've always thought you were supposed to push the box over the hole. Uh, that is true for Resident Evil 1, but this is Resident Evil Remake, and if you push the box over that center hole, then another tentacle is going to come up and grab you. So you're supposed to push that box on the right hole, and then climb up both those boxes in order to avoid the Plant 42 tentacle. Now that we've got the uh, the control room key, we're going to make our third save here and start up part four. The reason I make the save over here is because sometimes the sharks don't cooperate. Although, if you run exactly in the center of the walkway and you take the outermost route, then you will always get around the sharks. At least as far as I can tell. It's one of those gotcha traps set up especially to mess with people who had played RE1 and thought it would be the same. That is correct. It's one of the reasons why I love this game, actually, because it just completely subverts all of your expectations if you played the original RE1. Personally, I don't think the experience of playing RE1 Remake is complete without having played the original game first. This is my favorite Resident Evil game, by the way. But the overall experience is complete with playing RE1 before playing Resident Evil Remake. Does saving and reloading reset the RNG state of the game? No, it does not. It's uh, actually impossible to determine RNG. But if you are precise enough in your movement, you can generally take it down to one of a few permutations, at which point you can have some semblance of consistency, albeit within plus or minus a couple of seconds if we're talking about speedruns. 
But in no damage, the only thing that matters is consistency. And that's what all of my strats were designed around. And this is the most consistent way to get around the sharks, speaking of, is not taking the inner line and just running in the center of the walkway. Detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. Reaching 30% of pressure threshold. Checking the whiteboard will tell you exactly which threshold. switch to press. Activate emergency drainage system immediately. You'll either press 1, 2, or 3. And even if you are playing the Japanese version, it will literally show the number 1, 2, or 3 amidst all that Japanese. That's all you have to remember. Ichiban, Nibon, or Sanban. So we could fry the shark. That's actually what I would recommend doing, but I also know how to just drop into the water and grab the key because I am that much of a badass. It's actually 100% consistent, by the way, if you know exactly how to do it. So now we're going to go to the gallery, and we're also going to deal with Plant 42. I don't even know why I ran that way. Jill's movement must have fucked up somehow. As long as we go in and grab the bug spray and just, like, don't fuck around while moving, then we don't got to worry about the bees. Also, the combination on the door is any combination of the numbers 3, 5, and 6. It's total RNG. I'm going to start with uh, grabbing these bottles and grabbing yellow 6. And... Grabbing water and grabbing number 3. And then we mix the water with UMB number three and the UMB number four that we just created with UMB number six and I had messed up. So I'm going out to use the bug spray and go back in so that I can get another bottle. In order to solve the V-Jolt puzzle, the correct solution is 1 plus 3 equals 4, 4 plus 6 equals 10. So now you have a 10 in your inventory, then you grab another bottle of water, which is 1, and another bottle of 6, and then you mix the 1 and the 6 to get 7, and then you mix the 7 and the 10 to get 17, and the 3 and the 17 in order to get 20, which is the V-Jolt. Of course, the solution is right there on the wall, written in chalk, so... It's 
a very basic, really easy math puzzle. Then we got to go all the way back around to go use the V-Jolt. Basically, Jill just gets a free pass and she never has to fight Plant 42 if you mix the V-Jolt. It ain't fast, but you get to skip the fight. And for good reason, too, because Plant 42 is a horrible boss. If you're trying to do it knife only, and you're probably wondering, well... How are you supposed to beat Plant 42 knife only? And the answer is you slice off its tentacles. Because if you slice off its tentacles, then it has no arms. It's donezo. Game over, man. Game over. By the way, Twitch chat, you can enable waifu only mode in chat by spamming Carsey Gasm. Is there any speedrun category that uses V Jolt? No, there is not, because V Jolt is too slow. There was actually no reason for me to save here. I should have actually saved in the uh, in the save room coming out. But I guess I wanted to save here in order to get closer to the hunters, maybe? Nah, this would have been longer if I had to reload a save. Coming back up here, we got snakes dropping out of the trees, and then there's going to be, like, a bunch of snakes that are going to try to ambush us. So as long as we run in a very specific line, we'll be able to get around them all pretty easy. Whenever we see the dog rearing up, getting ready to start running... Um, pay attention to his head because his head is going to tell you exactly what direction he's going to go. So when you see that, you can go the opposite direction. Now dealing with hunters, hunters are fast and annoying. So the best way to deal with them is to just simply choose the correct door to go through 
so that you'd be able to easily dodge them or avoid them altogether. That's what I recommend. So what I do here is I just go directly up to the C-shaped hallway here. We had a zombie pop through the door there, which uh, actually shuffles the position of all these zombies here. And then we're going to go through the library and out this door, and then we're going to hold straight up. And the hunter will jump over us. Which is a pretty simple manipulation, but it just requires a lot of setup. So as you can see, I didn't go directly up the stairs, even though that would have been the more direct way, because the route that I ran was safer. If I ran the other way, then I would have had to manipulate both the hunters, and I would have had significantly lower chance of making it through up to the top of the stairs without taking any damage. Next, grabbing the first Doom book. We're going to dodge some spooters over here. I like to grab this dagger because it uh, spaces out the zombie a little more and allows us to get around him a little easier. It's like I have daggers, it's pretty safe to get around no matter what, but when he chokes me out like this, then it's like forget it, just take the butt or just take the grab and go. And because that zombie was uh, right outside of the puddle of water, he was on a slightly higher Z-axis than Jill is. So he's going to puke. Which may or may not be handy to you, depending. Next, we're going to go this way. As long as we hug that wall, that zombie is none the wiser. Take this battery pack here and this battery. We're going to deal with Yawn a lot later, so we're going to go ahead and go directly to the caverns. Yawn is not difficult to kill with only a knife, but it takes, it takes ages. It takes a long, long time. I do the same thing in my no-save runs as well, because I have to actually go back out that way anyway. Like, I have to go back out into the main hall and down through the dining room and back out the west side just to be able to lock in the correct, the correct way to avoid all the zombies. There's going to be uh, one hunter here that we have to dodge, but it's really easy as long as we just hug the left side of the wall here. He will always 180 turn. He will always miss. Just go directly towards the door. Just don't fuck around. I would say that uh, in the case of a no damage run, easy and safe go hand in hand. The safest thing is always the easiest thing. The achievement for knife only is very strict on knife only, but I don't think it's a very fun way to play. I just rather do not like tanking a lot of damage. For 
for the hunter over here, we're just going to hold up on the D-pad. Just hold up. You will dodge him 100% of the time if you hold up on the D-pad. Gonna wait a second here. What direction is that dog gonna go? And perfect. This spot over here is a run under if you are not careful with your movement. Again, got to watch out for that dog, what directions he's going to come from. But sometimes he'll just ruin your run whenever he feels like it by just doing a a jumping bite attack. Fortunately, in Resident Evil 1 Remake, we don't have to worry too much about dogs because they aggro for a little while before they actually start moving. We don't have to worry about them just like outright pouncing on us. Even on 30 FPS. That animation was added to their AI cycle for some reason in Resident Evil 1 HD remaster, but it was not present on the GameCube versions. Because the dogs just move immediately on the GameCube version. I don't know if frame rate ties into it or what. Which enemy patterns are the most random in your experience? Mostly ones involving dogs. Because it's like zombies, you can just get grabbed and pass around by using a defense item. But dogs, on the other hand, they can just sort of hit you whenever they feel like it sometimes. Hunters are also really annoying too because they have a wide swing radius. And also because they have a lot of hit stun. Like if you don't know how to follow up, like do a follow up dodge whenever a hunter hits you, then it will decapitate you. Gonna make our save here before Black Tiger. How many ways can the Black Tiger fight go tits up? Uh, plenty, but the trick is to try to manipulate its melee attacks. I'd say the main way that it could go tits up is if you are too far away whenever you recognize its attack cycle. So Black Tiger has a charging melee attack, a spinning melee attack, which happens at close range. That's the easiest one to bait out. He also has one where he like raises his legs or his pedipops or whatever the fuck they're called. So I slash three times and then I run up to him to check his attack. And he was locked into doing melee, fortunately. It's like every uh, every three seconds or so after he does an attack, he will either do a melee attack or a long range acid attack. And sometimes he may buffer this attack with one where he's raising his pedipalps. So it's kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a, kind of a slot machine, I guess. It could either be one of three actions. He either melees, he acids, or he 
just raises his legs. And sometimes if he raises his legs twice in a row, then it means his attack cycle has reset and you basically just get free slashes on the web. Is that even the is that even the right word? I don't know, let me find out. Pedipops are the second pair of appendages on Chelicerates, a group of arthropods, including spiders, scorpions, horseshoe crabs, and sea spiders. Oh. See? I was right. For each boss fight, how likely are you to lose a no damage run to that boss if your execution is perfect? Um, I'd say probably the worst offender is Black Tiger. And maybe Elder Crimson Head. I would say that those are the two biggest choke points with the route that I have planned out for this. As long as you know your speedrun dodges and are rationing your daggers, then the rest of the dodges are not difficult. So it's really only Elder Crimson Head and the spider, Black Tiger, that can actually cause problems in this run. It can also cause problems going back. There's a strat for getting rid of the webs and a strat for leaving the room. But it's like every three seconds you have to you have to move towards Black Tiger and uh, try to move towards its like left or its right so that you can check and see what attack is gonna it's gonna it's gonna use. And uh, if it uses Acid Spit, then you just have to sort of run in a circle around him to dodge it, and then go back to slashing the web until you can check his attack cycle again. So, gotta go down, and there's his attack cycle. He started with a buffered Acid Spit. So it's like whenever he rumbles like that, it means he's going to follow up with an Acid Spit, like, immediately after. So when that happens, it's like, fuck it, it's free. Like, you could hear it bubbling up. He never cancels after that bubble. It's always a telegraph and you're always going to get acid spit when that happens. So it's like, if you see that, then just run towards the door. Fuck it, it's done. <laughs> just make sure you're angled towards the door if that's the case. So now we're going to the basement area. Well, the B2 area of the uh, catacombs. That puzzle is always the same. The solution is 4, 2, 3, 1. We're going to trigger that camera angle first there so that Lisa does not spawn in our way on the way to uh, using the... Uh, or putting the box on the gondola over here. Gondola, gondola. The wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Climb up here, and there's going to be another stun gun to grab. Gonna go down here, get Lisa to spawn over there, and then we're gonna leave.
Next up, spawn Lisa here again. I'm gonna pull the lever. And because we spawned Lisa over there, we're gonna take the long way around where hopefully she won't be in our way. Oh, but she almost was. She's more likely to follow us towards the lever than anything, which is why I took that took that particular route to get through there. And at this point we have everything we need to make our way to the laboratory. For this area, just hold up and run and the open button. Those zombies are just there to punish you if you didn't get the magnum earlier. Take the stone and metal object and we're going to make our way into... Spencer's office. When we do that, we're going to turn on the lamp here. I did not mean to pick up those shotgun shells. I don't know, maybe Jill will bust out some... some Relento shit from, like, Street Fighter Alpha or something. Actually, that was a lie. We don't have everything that we need to get into the lab. You know why? Because I am a huge dumby and I forgot about Yawn. This is the only run through where I choose to fight Yawn late in Mansion 3. So this fight is really, really long and really, really boring. We're going to try to get in as many free slashes as we can with Yawn over here. And then once we get to the ladder here, we hold down and start climbing down immediately. Now Yawn is stuck down here forever.
So now what we got to do is we have to stay in the center of this bookshelf back here, and we got to peek around the corner. Where is Jan going to go? Jan's going down, so we bait counterclockwise and slash his tail in upwards of twice. Go back to the center. Where is Jan going to come from? This fight really just requires concentration. And not even that much. Slash down. He's coming from the bottom again. Oh, nope. No, he's not. I was getting greedy. Well, this was segmented, so I was able to get a little greedy. Like I said, this isn't hard, it's just long, and it takes like... It takes like, I don't know, 60 slashes to take out Yawn. But I'm still gonna keep the recording of the entire fight for posterity. Well, let's see. If you have headphones on, then you're able to predict where he's going to go pretty easily. If you learn to recognize the position of the audio in relation to the camera angle. Which, fortunately, this game's sound design is really, really good. I'm going to bait him this way, then. Right? Yep. But I was mostly running out in the center to just like sort of lure him one way. I think luring him counterclockwise gets you the most possible slashes if you can get away with it. There he is. Going counterclockwise again, but still not fast enough. You can only get away with one slash, two slashes. You can definitely use this for your own knife run if you wanted to. By the way, I should probably mention... And uh, hopefully you read the disclaimer and you are listening to me about watching the entire run before trying to mimic anything that I do. And the reason for that is because the commentary explains things, especially things that you should really know in advance, such as the achievement for knife only, the knife only achievement will only track if you, one, do not stomp heads, two, do not use defense weapons, and three, do not use any weapons at all. Also, four, do not burn bodies. You can't burn bodies either. Also, the reason I play on hard mode is just because because there's fewer defense items in general. It's just challenge, I guess. The enemy patterns on hard and the defense item placement on hard is, well, hard. Oh, I got lucky here. It's three slashes, hell yeah. It's my lucky day. I'm trying to lure him up that way. 
Ooh! Oh, wow! He could have slashed me through there. Man, that was ball... That was ballsy. That was ballsy. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't try that. Don't try that. Don't do that. Just go for the pokes. Just go for the slow pokes. But I'd say that probably the quickest, easiest way to take out Yawn is to just stock up on first aid sprays and slash his head because his head actually does take a lot more damage. Yeah, past Carsey had all the balls. It's like I remember the route for this run, but I never remember how the run went exactly whenever I go to commentate a run that I recorded over a year ago. It's always a fun little grab bag. That's one of the fun things about watching my videos is that you never know what Carsey has stored on his hard drive. For a rainy day. And this, my friends, is a rainy day. Oh yeah, uh, one other thing. So I played Resident Evil 2 the original Resident Evil 2 with Hideki Kamiya. I was in Japan for that. You guys are probably wondering why this video... why that video may possibly not be uploaded yet. If it is uploaded, I don't know, and it probably is, go give a look. But at the time of this recording, uh, I still haven't uploaded it yet because I wanted to do a little bit of editing. I recorded it with a really good camera. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, I had the best quality for you guys. That's all. That's why it was taking so long. Would you consider this fight the most tedious part of the knife run? Is that a joke, Luca Dan? Oh yeah, I totally forgot. I'm not supposed to talk to Twitch chat during these commentaries, what the hell? But this is really boring. We all know this is really boring. It's a lot more exciting when you're actually like when you're actually like on track to actually get getting like a no hit run in this, believe me. I'm just trying to bait the bait the snake. Just trying to get as many hits as possible. Cause this is taking forever. Bait up. Is he going that way? I don't know, you tell me. Now he's not. Got him to commit to a direction, and now we slash the tail. Commit to a direction, slash the tail. Commit to a direction, slash the tail. Commit to a direction, slash the tail. Oh, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm actually going to have, like, a fast-forward button. I'll just have, like, a fast-forward piece of splash text that just, like, pops up over here. That sounds like a good idea. I'll remember to do that whenever I finally edit this video.
Carsey, no, the copyright strikes. Kanye will ban you. Hey, Kanye West. Bork, bork, I need to poop. But yeah, I've been looking for hours for a way to make this fight faster, and really the only way is death by a thousand cuts. How do you think Jan feels after being stabbed for the 40th time? I don't know, man. Snakes don't really have a whole lot of... Snakes don't really do a whole lot except just like... Just like hiss and salivate all Pavlovian. Especially that one. But whatever, that's done. Now we get to go to the laboratory. Loading up part eight. Gonna go through the Lisa fight. There's a lab in the snake chasing game. You mean there's a lab in my berry killing game? Yeah, when this bitch jumps over the coffin, we just run around the other side. And just have her jump back this way. We're far enough away. Oh, but she ain't jumping. But when she throws her when she throws her head around 90 degrees like that. She's committed to a specific action. It's like a uh, 180 degree dodge or a 180 degree turn, only instead it's like 90 degrees. So she's locked into that action, meaning we can dodge around her when she does that. It's a very, uh, it's kind of a subtle animation to notice. But like getting used to the way the enemies move is like paramount to being able to dodge things in this game.
I swear I've memorized just about every single movement animation in this game. The only thing that I haven't memorized, though, is the pivots and the turns. That's the only thing that I can't wrap my head around in this game. Sometimes. It's like knowing what causes zombies to pivot around on an axis. Wherein they're the animations of their feet do not correspond to anything else. It just decides, oh, well, I'm just going to spin around. Because there's a difference between, like, the 180-degree turns and them spinning into their lunges and their attacks. Okay, so because we're playing hard mode, all these guys are right here. And I wasted a dagger, so what I'm going to do is apparently reset the room, because I'm better at dodging these guys on a fresh room. And sometimes I'm not. But it's not terrible to dodge the second one, although I was pretty close to actually getting back grabbed. So for this one over here, this is like one of the only zombies that we actually have to kill. So we're going to zap him, then we're going to slit his throat. No muss, no fuss. Login is John, the password is Ada, the second password is Mole. As per usual, we're gonna go upstairs. I actually prefer not to kill any of the zombies up here, because if I did, then they would have turned into crimson heads by the time I got done with the tyrant. So that would have thrown my escape in for a loop. I'd rather dodge what I know how to dodge than attempt to dodge what I actually do not know how to dodge. Oh, did I say mole? God damn it. I mixed up the two again. It is cell. Sorry, mole is classic RE1. But fun fact, if you type in uh, mole in a New Game Plus run, then you get a little voice clip of uh, Tofu from uh, Resident Evil 2. Trying to stab this guy. Hopefully he... Uh, hopefully he jumps up onto the ceiling. That'd be pretty swell of him if he does. But otherwise we're just going to keep slashing him. Oh, he's on the ceiling? Free. Please grab me. Thank you for grabbing me. Now get zapped. It looks like Jill's getting choked out, but that's actually zero points of damage. Jill didn't lock on, so that should have clued me into the fact that he was dead. Overkill. Carsey, talk about how mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Maybe I'll do that in the eventual Parasite Eve no damage run. Alright, so this guy, once again, zap -a rooney Then we slit his throat. I 
now that we've cleared out all the enemies that are directly in the way of us and getting to the tyrant, we're just going to walk it. On hard mode, you can run three steps and walk two steps. And if you just keep alternating with that every time, then you'll get there faster. But if I'm not going for speed, I just like to walk it. Because sometimes I accidentally go four steps and blow myself up. Nah, I'm not going to edit out the parts where I'm talking to chat. It's fine. There were plenty of boring parts that I just, like, wanted to, I don't know, pass the time, and it's like, why not talk to chat? So, sure. I'm pretty sure all the people on YouTube will forgive me for that. Anyhow. We're just running directly around these guys. Fuck them. Because they're all spawning in, they're not going to be able to attack us. They're just ninja dropping out of these vents. Also, while they're standing on their hind legs, uh, the chimeras can only do like their hook attack, which is like their overhead attack. So it's plenty of... Uh, Plenty of buffer before their damage frames come out. You can just like go right around them. So it's like fuck them at that point. Carsey, you gotta take your commentary game to the year 3000 and include a Discord voice chat in the audio, lol. No. <laughs> that is one thing I will I will never do. Not unless not unless I was I was running the game running whatever game I was recording a commentary on with someone else. But, uh, maybe Resident Evil 5? I don't know. I do have a Resident Evil 5 commentary on my hard drive as well. Not commentary, but a Resident Evil 5 no damage run. Gotta edit that shit too. If you guys are wondering what's down the pipes. Alright, so, final part, Tyrant. I don't think that slashing upwards actually does any more damage. Instead, we're just gonna be running around him. He's always going to quick turn a bunch. If he quick turns, then he's locked into a movement animation. So it's like, once we see the start of him quick turning, that's when we have to go behind him. Because at the end of the quick turn animation, he is very likely to swing at us. Otherwise, we uh, stay in one of two zones. One of three zones, actually. And they are all the fuck yes zone. And the fuck yes zone is Tyrant's ass crack, his left butt cheek, and the right butt cheek. Because that will always, that will always, 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 always proc a quick turn. And it is also the safest angle at which to slash him. Everywhere else is called the fuck no zone. So you see Tyrant's ass, you get all up in there until he quick turns. Because if you're directly to Tyrant's side, he's going to slash you. Either side. Just don't do it. Just stay hugging those ass cheeks. What are you talking about? Tyrant's got an ass like a superhero. You could get lost in that. Anyway. Just dodge around these zombies and uh, that's it. That's... that's the end of the uh, knife only no damage playthrough it's bad ending so there's nothing exciting else to talk about other than uh, well thank you guys very much for watching
I will have the Chris version of this video uploaded very soon. If you liked what you see, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, go to the pinned comment and check out the no commentary version, as well as my remake playlist, so you can watch all of my other remake videos. Hopefully they help you get some achievements. Also follow my Twitch, twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I stream there full time. If you want to fund my bad speedrunning habit, Jim, go to patreon.com slash carcinogensda. Thank you guys very much for watching and see you all next video.